Hello, for today's video lecture, we're going to be talking about shear and moment diagrams. So as a reminder, uh, we're using a graphical approach here. So the older method, by splitting a body at a specific point and performing an equilibrium analysis at that uh, kind of cross section, we can find internal forces and moments at that point. Uh, and if we look at a second, if we want to look at the second point, we would need to do a second analysis. So often, however, it's not going to be obvious where the highest internal forces and moments are going to be. And so we need to do several points uh, to make sure. And with the graphical approach, approach, we can look at all of the points along the length of a beam uh, and figure out the shearing forces and shearing moments at those points. Um, so we plot it out. Uh, and specifically here, we're going to be plotting out the shearing forces uh, and the bending moments within a beam, uh, allowing us to easily pick out those maximum values and where the beam's most likely to fail. All right, so in a beam, we use some simple rules to plot out internal shearing forces in that beam. Uh, then we can use the shear diagram and some additional information to plot out the internal bending moment diagram. Uh, and for this, uh, if we have, imagine this is kind of a horizontal um, beam that we have in a floor or in a roof uh, supporting multiple loads. Uh, specifically, what we'd be looking at in that case is the vertical shearing force, so this V1, and then the bending moment would be about uh, this other axis over here, so M2. So if we have something on its side, we could be looking at V2 and M1, uh, but for the most case, it's going to be V1 and M2 uh, in this diagram here. All right, so both of these plots, they're used to examine horizontal beams in buildings and other structures. Anywhere you've got those horizontal uh, trusses, uh, or, sorry, uh, horizontal beams like in a floor and a roof, you're going to have this analysis. All right, so in a horizontal beam, so over here I've got a beam uh, set up with all sorts of loading. Uh, I'm looking at the internal forces. Uh, so if I'm looking at cross section AA, I'm looking at the left half of the beam in this case. Uh, the shear diagram is going to be used to determine the internal shearing force. Uh, it'd be this force here. Uh, and then the bending moment. Uh, is going to be the internal moment that's going to resist these external loads, so this bending moment here. So shearing diagram is plotting the force, uh, bending diagram is plotting the moment in this case. All right, so how do I create the, let's start with the shear diagram. How do I create the shear diagram? So first we'd solve for all the external forces and moments on the beam. Um, so same as always, we need to know those external forces before we can know the internal uh, forces and moments. Uh, once we have that, we're going to draw a free body diagram of the horizontal beam, and we want to include all forces and moments. So if we have any distributed forces, unlike before where we always convert it to an equivalent point load, we want to leave those distributed forces as distributed forces. Don't replace them uh, with the equivalent point load because it does matter for those internal forces. Next, we're going to draw a set of axes below the free body diagram, uh, and the x-axis is going to represent the location, so it's important it lines up with your free body diagram above. Uh, and the y-axis is going to represent the internal shearing force. So to fill in your graph, you're going to start at the left, start at zero, and as you move right, you follow the following rules. Uh, so each time you encounter a point force, uh, so if it's an upward force, you jump up. If it's a downward force, you jump down. Um, each time you encounter a uniform distributed force, so if you've got a distributed force that's going uh, you know, so many kilonewtons per meter, uh, it's going to be a line in your diagram. It's going to have the magnitude of the uniform distributed force is going to be the slope of the line. Uh, so if you have distributed force going up, you have a positive slope. If you've got a distributed force going down, you've got a negative slope in your line. Uh, each time you encounter a non-uniform distributed force, so you've got some distributed force um, that is not just so many kilonewtons per meter, uh, we're going to need to do the inter integral of the force function. So figure out what is the equation of that distributed force. Take the integral of that. The integral of that is going to be the line um, or the function we follow in our diagram. And for now, we're going to ignore any moments in the diagram now. Uh, so any moments, just ignore them for the shear diagram. All right, so let's do this in practice. So here we've got our beam. Uh, I've got a point force, I've got a moment, I've got two supports, and I've got a distributed force. So everything is kind of squeezed in there. Step one in all this is always to 
uh, figure out those reaction forces. So I had two supports. I need to figure out what those support forces are. Uh, symbol forces in the X, symbol forces in the Y. Uh, here, I would need to use the equivalent point load to do the statics problem to solve for the two supports. All right, so I've done that. I figured out all of my external forces, got my free body diagram of the uh, beam. Below that, I'm gonna put a force, uh, uh, set of axes, force on the y-axis, location on the x-axis, and I've lined it up below my diagram. And let's follow the rules. So I start at zero at the left, and immediately I hit a point force. So six kilonewtons means I jump immediately down uh, six kilonewtons. So I go that far uh, until I hit my next point force. So here I'm at four, I go up 4.2. So negative six plus 4.2 brings me to negative 1.8. Um, so I do have this moment, but I'm ignoring that. That'll come into play with my moment diagram. So now I'm at 1.8, I keep that steady. Uh, and then I start to hit my distributed force. So here it's gonna be linear. This is a downward distributed force. So I'm gonna go down with a slope of one kilonewton per meter uh, of my beam. So I go uh, a certain amount, so it's down a uh, slope of negative one. If I go negative one for three meters, I wind up, I go from negative 1.8 to negative 4.8. I hit another point force right in the middle of my distributed force. So I'm gonna make a jump here. Uh, so negative 4.8 plus 7.8 would bring me up to three. Uh, and then I follow, I still am going negative slope so this last piece, I'm gonna follow a negative slope uh, of negative one uh, until I get back to zero. Just like with the axial diagrams and the torsion diagrams, I always wanna wind up coming back to zero at the end. That is the good double check you can have to make sure you've done everything right. So again, point forces cause jumps. So jump down, jump up. Uh, uniform, distributed low, uh, line, uh, uniform distributed forces cause a linear slope. Uh, if I have to have, have something weird, I take the integral of that force function, and that's the kind of shape of my uh, piece in there. All right, so that is our shear diagram. We've got that here. This is the shearing force as I move from the left to the right within my beam. So creating the moment diagram. Uh, step number one in this, you need to draw your shear diagram. So a prerequisite for making the moment diagram is to make the shear diagram. So set up your shear diagram, go through all the steps we just talked about. Next, you're gonna draw a set of axes lined up below the shear diagram. So you can do all three of these in one. So free by the diagram, underneath that you put your shear diagram, underneath the shear diagram you can put your moment diagram. Uh, the x-axis, it represents location. Again, it lines up with the shear diagram and the free body diagram above that. The y-axis is gonna represent the internal bending moment. Uh, and to fill in the graph, you start at the left, start at zero, and as you move to the right, each time, uh, for, for the most part, the moment diagram is gonna be the integral of your shear diagram. So if you take the integral of the shear diagram, you have the moment diagram, uh, except whenever you count encounter any direct moments, that's what causes a jump in the moment diagram. It's gonna be a nice smooth function, except if you have those moments uh, and so if you have a positive moment, it causes a downward jump. If you have a negative moment, it causes an upward jump. So again, you do the opposite of what the external moments are doing because this is an internal reaction to those external moments. So that's the process. Let's go ahead and do this. So I've got my shear diagram. I've kind of moved that up to the top. Uh, I've put the number the distances in here just to make it a little bit easier. Uh, and now I'm gonna put a set of axes. So I've got the moment on the y-axis and the location on the x-axis. So the integral for this first part, so the integral of negative six would be negative six x. Uh, so I have a slope of negative six over three meters. Uh, and if I have a slope of negative six over three meters, I'm gonna wind up at negative 18 kilonewton meters uh, over here. So, one thing that I need to go back, if I go back a couple steps, I have my 36 kilonewton meters, and this is a clockwise or a negative moment. So that's where I'm gonna have a jump. So if I go forward again, I have negative 18. Suddenly I'm gonna jump up by a total of 36. So go from negative 18 up to positive 18, uh, because that is a positive jump of 36 kilonewton meters. 
All right, so I've made the jump because of the directly applied moment. Next up, I've got a uh, constant negative 1.8 kilonewtons uh, in my shear diagram. So I'm gonna have negative, a slope of negative 1.8x uh, here. So if I go uh, negative 1.8 kilonewtons per meter over seven meters, that'd be, bring me from 18 down to 5.4. So linear slope, it's not quite as steeply sloped as the initial section because it is less negative. All right, next step is this. So I'm gonna take the integral of this downward line. So the integral of a downward line is gonna be a downward parabola. Uh, so if you think about it, this is the slope uh, of the line down here. So it's starting negative. I have a negative slope in my parabola and the further I go, the more negative it gets. So I'm gonna have a, a parabola that's negative and gets more negative. So I follow that shape and how do I tell how far it goes? Uh, well, the easy way is I'm taking the integral. So the integral is the area under the curve. So the area of this trapezoid uh, is gonna be, well, it's three meters wide uh, by the average of these two. So the average of negative 1.8 and negative 4.8 is negative 3.3. Three times 3.3 is the area in this shape uh, and that is 9.9 .9, uh, kilonewton meters. And so 5.4 minus 9.9 .9 is negative 4.5 kilonewton meters. All right, so I've jumped down and then suddenly uh, I jump up in my shear diagram. So it's still a downward line, uh, but now it is suddenly going from a very negative slope to a positive slope. And so this last piece is going to be a still a parabola, uh, but it's gonna have a positive slope and kind of evens out to a horizontal line. So the integral of this function is a parabola kind of going up like this. Uh, so I'm gonna go start at negative 4.5. The area of this triangle, it's gonna be one half base times height. So one half times three times three. So nine times one half is 4.5. So I'll go from negative 4.5 up to zero. Uh, and that's what I want to do with my moment diagram as well. I always want to end up at zero, just like I do with my torsion, just like I do with my shear diagram, etc. All right, so that's all I have. That's how to create your shear and moment diagrams. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.